What's up? It has been a minute. Welcome to my channel. My name is Tamaya. Talking with Tamaya and this gang, if you're new. I am a recent law school and business school graduate. I live in Los Angeles, California, and I'm currently preparing for the bar exam. So hey you guys, it's been a minute, but I really wanted to come on here and talk to you guys because today was kind of a lot. Um, and I'm going to put a little clip of it after I give the intro, but I'm currently preparing for the bar exam, for the California bar exam. Um, and the issue is, and I haven't talked to you guys, I haven't vlogged in like a month or two, like a month and a half. Um, so I don't have you guys updated, but what happened is California initially, my fan is kind of loud, I'm sorry, but it's hot, okay? It's so hot in LA. It's so freaking hot. I think it's hot everywhere, but I don't know, I'm just here. But, um... We are initially going to take the bar exam September 9th and 10th. And then the National Conference of Bar Examiners made it clear that they would only be allowing a limited amount of their multiple choice questions. They're the ones who make the MBE, the multiple choice section. They would only be offering a limited amount and that would be um, administered on October 5th and 6th. So California already at the outset emphasized that they wanted to hold a remote exam. Um, now our numbers are higher than they've ever been so I don't think that there is any way that we could divert from having a remote exam. So many students have already moved back home with parents and it's just like a very critical time for pretty much everybody so it wouldn't be feasible um, to hold an in-person exam. It just wouldn't. So then in June, uh, like the beginning of June, honestly, like maybe like June 15th, June 14th, they sent us an email pretty much telling us what I just told you guys that they are considering having the exam um, in October. So they'll let us know for sure after they hold the first year um, exam. So first year exams are exams that they hold for students who don't attend accredited um Law schools, however, they are still law schools, so they typically have to pass the first year exam to move forward in their law school career. Something like that, don't have all the details. But, so they were administering the at-home version of the um, first year exam, so they said like once we're done with that, we'll be able to have more insight on the feasibility of having a remote bar exam. So then, July, like, first came and they hadn't told us anything then they sent us an email and said okay we're gonna hold like a town hall where you guys can let us know all of your concerns um you can also send us um things to this email address let us know like what you guys have in mind so yes the call happened today you guys and it was very 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 intense it was very very intense and i think sometimes it's hard i'm gonna turn the fan off for a second because i know it's gonna be loud when i'm editing i'm gonna be mad so yeah, the call was really intense. It was a three hour call and I stayed on for the entire three hours. Um, and I think sometimes it's really hard for people to understand what other people are going through when you're not aware of it. So for me, it was very eye opening because I was able to hear about so many different struggles that many recent graduates and even people who have been trying to take and pass the california bar exam have been experiencing and this pandemic has not discriminated in the sense of the impact that it's had on so many of these students so students just kind of emphasize like the struggles that they're dealing with and it was just heartbreaking it was really really heartbreaking but what was honestly a reoccurring request is that so many students were advocating for diploma privilege now mind you prior to this call i never considered it i never even considered the thought of a diploma privilege um, and for those of you guys who don't know what diploma privilege is it's pretty much several jurisdictions have already implemented it where i don't know what their full um restraints or what their full requirements are but essentially making it so that students don't have to take the bar exam right now and instead they'll be able to do a supervised practice under a um, licensed attorney and i never even considered it but after hearing everybody's kind of like arguments it's very very compelling especially understanding i don't know if you guys know this but california has the hardest next to uh delaware but delaware their pass rate they um, they pass more attorneys california has the hardest bar exam in the country california in their february bar exam 75 percent of the people did not pass i'm going to tell you out the gate there are not that many people who are not competent to be an attorney 
these people went to school for three years these people have the work ethic to be an attorney so for 75 percent of the applicants to not pass that's absurd that's absurd that's absurd to me and me being a black woman and just looking at the statistics I am just kind of like appalled at the fact that there is so much disparate treatment when it comes to standardized tests such as that. When you think about things like the LSAT and you think about things like the SAT, people fail to realize, people fail to realize what kind of privilege comes with that. I have so many young minority students who have come to me asking me for advice on self-studying do you guys not know that a majority of their classmates whatever law school they go to either paid for a top tier tutor or invested in a top tier course me personally that was my very reason for starting this youtube channel the first videos i made were free resources so that students who looked like me could get into this profession that pretty much has made it that if you don't have the means or the resources to pay for this type of education or pay for this kind of tutoring you you can't make it in i found i scoured the internet during my entire process of studying for the lsat in an effort to help people who look like me because i spent my entire summer in california my junior year working at a restaurant just so that i could pay for my lsat prep course so i understood that everybody didn't have the means to do that everybody didn't have the time to do that so for me i really wanted to find a way to be able to help people who look like me make it into this profession two percent of the attorneys look like me in my state in my state two percent of the attorneys look like me so it breaks my heart when i know that 75 percent of the people who took the february bar exam didn't pass it's absurd so I do know that once I am a licensed California attorney and licensed in whatever other state I get licensed in, I'm going to do my part to make sure that there is access to the non-traditional law students, the people who are not second generation law students, the people who don't have the means to cough up $3,000 for an LSAT prep course or $5,000 for a tutor. I'm going to make sure that I do my part so that they can have a seat at the table because to me it's disgusting and it's just it's disheartening to know that there are people who are truly dealing with that. And I don't know if I turned a blind eye to the fact that the numbers of the students, the applicants who are not passing, they're black and brown students. These black and brown students who are brilliant. I know some of the smartest attorneys in the world, in the world, like hands down, in this state, number one attorneys who didn't pass the California bar exam probably the first one or two times. It's not because they weren't competent. It's because our cut score is higher than every other state. There's not a reason why there were people on this call who did not pass the February bar exam, but they would be licensed in 48 different states. 48 different states, they had scores high enough to be attorneys there, but not here in California. Something's not right, don't like it. So that's what I dealt with today. And honestly, it was just a lot. So in addition to that, um, we're just waiting. We don't really know what the outcome is, but I just kind of wanted to update you guys on that um, because I'm just disappointed I'm very disappointed but anyway I guess I'll give like an update on like what I've been going through what I've been doing what I've been up to right now I'm actually doing some studying I've been studying every day honestly like 8 to 12 hours a day that takes up the bulk of my day I work I wake up in the morning I take care of my dogs I work out I've actually been working out twice a day crazy as it sounds but it's honestly been really helping me so I wake up take care of my dogs i work out i eat breakfast i study what does that sound oh my um i got a new speaker you guys um i study um i take breaks i want to emphasize i take a lot of breaks throughout the day whether it's a stretch break or a break to listen to music just a break to just get my head like clear um but then in the evening like around 5 or 6 p.m i usually take an evening walk or jog um so i do like a high intensity workout in the morning glutes abs the works and then in the evening i either do a jog a run or a walk and i usually bring my noise canceling headphones i usually do that for like 30 minutes 30 to 45 minutes and that has been my life at night i have like a nice decompressing routine i put in um 
lavender essential oil with um, lemongrass and I just set the tone take a nice shower just decompress and I usually try to be in bed by like 11 sleep by like 11 15 usually honestly winding down in bed like 10 45 sleep around like 11 11 15 and back up in the morning I've been waking up like around around 6 45 7 15 between that window depending on what time I go to sleep and I also have a sleep tracker so it usually wakes me up whenever my body's like the lightest so it's never a specific time but it's between that window of time and that's really just been my life just a lot of studying so i'm going to just update you guys later on in this vlog i think this is going to be a few days of a vlog because i actually will be speaking on a panel for black girls do law um on friday maybe i won't be vlogging up till then because today's actually tuesday i'm not really sure but maybe i will because i do want to kind of update you guys right now since we are kind of in the limbo period so i don't feel completely like overwhelmed to pick up the camera um i also need to do my nails i actually since last time i talked to you guys i've been doing my nails at home um and i ordered a gel set like a the gel lamp and a bunch of gel colors and it's just been honestly the best i love it so much so today i actually have to do my nails maybe i'll do it tomorrow i'm not really sure but yeah that's really been my life so i do want to show you guys uh later on sometime in this vlog once i'm done studying um some of my supplements because i told you guys in my bar prep haul video or in some other video that i was using or ordering different supplements to help supplement my bar prep studying so i have all of those things so just in case anybody's interested in using those things i would like you guys to know about those later on but we're gonna get some more studying done and i'll come talk to you guys in a little bit completely forgot I was vlogging that happens sometimes when I don't vlog for a while but I'm about to make my bed and um figure out what to eat I already worked out I already got ready like I already did all of that stuff so we're gonna make the bed and then I'm gonna go and figure out something to eat I went online grocery shop and honestly for the first time I used instacart um and this was like two days ago and honestly you guys it was really good for me though the guy who did the groceries he was so nice he was like honestly don't get used to it um because other people are not as nice as me but he was so nice so it was like i gave him a really big tip so it honestly ended up like not even being it ended up being a lot more a lot more expensive than it would be if i were to go get groceries on my own um but i thought it was worth it because people are really risking their lives right now during this pandemic and getting groceries for people like that's such a noble thing to do especially considering in la we are just experiencing a lot um more cases than previously so honestly they deserve it all but yeah I, I actually did really like it it was like really interesting if you guys haven't done it before my biggest concern was like okay people are not gonna um be attentive to like what kind of things i want or if the stores are gonna say something is there but it's not there but it seems like they're updating their inventory. I'm I'm really tired still, so obviously. It seems like they're updating their Im their inventory in real time because as he was shopping, if something wasn't there, he would like show an alternative. And then like I was like following him pretty much like as he was shopping, so he would say like, oh, we don't have they don't have this kind. Do you want this kind? And I would say yes or say refund. So it was really really cool. Um, so I definitely recommend it, especially during this time. But just please make sure that if you do it, make sure you tip because let's be honest, we a lot of us are younger, we we can go and get our own groceries as long as we're being safe. So the fact that people are really risking their lives and helping us, they deserve a substantial tip. So yeah, I really did actually like it. So I think I'll do that again next time I get groceries. Um, but we'll see. Because honestly, prior to studying for the bar exam, like I just went and got my own groceries. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, I just was taking precautions. But now I just don't even want to like take the time to like leave my house unless I absolutely have to. Like tomorrow I have to go to 
mail something off like those are things like i have to do but unless i really have to do something i really would rather not leave my house wow girl you are rude as hell anyway making my bed about to eat i want to make a smoothie but i also don't feel like um making it but i want to drink it <laughs> i hate it here okay bed's made um yeah i want to have a smoothie but i just don't feel like making it i don't feel like standing there and doing it but i actually got a lot of fruit also you guys it's been a while but i have been drinking lemon water every single morning but honestly all day because i keep the lemons i get like a glass and i'll just fill the glass up throughout the day with water honestly i drink like a gallon of water a day but i leave the lemons in the glass and just keep filling the water and then i'll just like stab the lemon with girl are you 10 i just stab the lemon with the um metal straw each time so like more lemon will come out and it just makes the best refreshing lemon water is such a vibe if you guys are looking for like a nice refreshing summer drink water but at lemon it's so good i drink it literally all day so hey baby gang what's up hey babies gang 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 my dogs they love me so much it's ridiculous baby gang baby gang this is my baby gang <laughs> i call them the baby gang because oh my gosh you don't have any respect for people and that shows man he's like an athlete the white is like a high school um one of those high school uh athletes who peaked in high school and goes back to like stunt on the new football players like that's how the white is with delilah like he loves to show out and like just be a bully Dwight, get down. I'll let Dwight get on the couch, but actually he's not supposed to be up there, but I just don't do it anymore. <laughs> this is why I'm not gonna be your mom, because I'm not really a good dog mom. I just let them be free, let them do what they want. Okay, come on, get down. Come here, come here, White White. Let's go, baby. Come on, baby boy, let's go play. It's the baby gang. Delilah's the president of the baby gang. That's what I call our little club. It's three of us in it. Dad, Dad's not in it. We actually gang up on him. But the baby gang is honestly a pretty prominent group. Delilah's president of the baby gang. Dwight's vice president. And I'm the treasurer. I hate myself. This is the fun I have, you guys, with my bad dogs. I'm more skilled than you, but I'm going to let you have it. Delilah. Like you guys know, Delilah is like a quarantine kid. I got her like at the beginning of <laughs> quarantine in like March. And she's like getting so big. She's like the white size and she's also an excellent fighter. She's like, she, I, hey, hey, you better watch it, Dwight. That's your sister. See, I am a good mom. I gotta give myself more credit. Um, but yeah, they're really um, a lot. <sighs> Hey, Dwight, let her play with it. Why are you being a bully? Dwight, let her play with it. Dwight's a, a little bully. It's ridiculous. Give me it now. Give me it. Give me it. We're not allowed to play with it for a second. It stinks. Y'all's breath stinks. You guys have freaking hot breath. This thing stinks. Ugh, it smells disgusting. I don't even want to touch it. Take it. Go. Get out. Come on, get out. I need you guys to head out. You guys are running running my anxiety up at this point. Go. I need you guys to head out. Dwight, head out. Dwight, head out. Head out. Thank you. Oh, Dwight's on the couch. Alright, go back in you guys' cages because go in the cage. It's a bad little group of people. It's a bad group of people right here. They're just a bad little group of kids. All right, we're about to make some breakfast. Honestly, I made some eggs in the post yesterday. It was honestly a very, very good, a very good. Okay, I need to make some food so I can study. I'll talk to you guys later. Gang, baby gang, say bye. Say bye, baby gang. She can't jump yet. It's really unfortunate, but he can. He's a jumping bean. 
Yum. Uh, we're about to be. It's hard to vlog when people be in my face, so I'm gonna wait today. Is that true though? I don't know. She probably knows what she's talking about. You should look like a soldier. No, because you're not. Oh, you be listening to me. I can say anything to you. You're going to listen. <laughs> I can say. I can say anything to my boyfriend. He's going to listen. He's he's going to believe it. I love that. I have I have such an influence on him. Like I can make him do anything I want. I'm not going to um, exploit that. But I'm just thankful to know it. Okay. I'm trying to like find a place to put you guys. I don't even know where my tripod is. Like I'm really not a vlogger anymore. Can't wait till I can get back. You know, in the in the zone. But right now, this is just. I actually my camera battery died. So while I was in the middle of scrambling my eggs, Jeremy's like, oh, "Baby, could you make me some eggs?" And I actually accidentally burnt was burning them. So I just let him have the ones that I was burning. And then now I'm making myself some new fresh ones because ladies first, <laughs> ladies. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just very, very, very delirious and immature. Um, but I'm putting a lot of cheese on there because, I don't know. Why not? It's really good when I do that. I'm going to make a bagel. And then I actually opened these little pineapples because Jim really likes pineapples and gave him some with his eggs. So I'm going to eat some of the pineapples and then probably just eat an apple and an orange for like a snack later. Or like a mini lunch. And maybe I'll even make a smoothie for like lunch later on um, but I told you guys I've been working out twice a day so later on I'll be in the evening when it's like cooler because it's kind of hot right now like around 5 5 30 I'll be going on a mile walk slash jog it's usually a mixture of two um, and it's just a really good way to break up my day because I after after doing that I kind of come back listen to finish listening to whatever I was listening to either um, a podcast or the Bible I've been reading and listening to the Bible every single day and it's been truly amazing so I'll either finish doing that um, and then just get back to studying for the rest of the evening so I'll be doing that later on today I was making my um, bagel or something. I don't know what I was making. But Jeremy's like, baby, those are some good eggs. And I'm like, no, my eggs are good eggs. Your eggs were firm, but <laughs> she can cook. So anyways, I have my food. We made our water. I have my coffee prepared to make. I don't want to, um, I don't really like to drink my coffee with my food. It's pretty gross to me. I don't know why. Are you guys the same? I just, I like to eat my food first and then just drink my coffee after. But like drinking coffee while eating breakfast, like that's just like grandma vibe. Like I'm just not with it. So I'm going to eat my food and then we're going to come back and make the coffee and get to work. I don't like to study while I'm eating. So we're going to like either watch something on YouTube or watch something on TV. And then we're going to start studying. So. Gang. I also have to do my nails today. Later. Okay, let's go. guys so it's literally a few days later um, it's been a few days since I vlogged earlier from the video you guys saw I thought that by this time I would have an answer about the bar exam but I still don't but I wanted to show you guys a few things before I close the vlog out I wanted to show you guys um, the supplements that I have and I also wanted to show you guys a new bag that I have um, 
just in case any of you guys are on the market for a new bag i don't know where you guys are going but some of y'all might be going to work i don't know maybe you are on the market for a new bag that's really good quality but not um as expensive as the previous bag i showed in my um Louis Vuitton unboxing so if you are someone who just wants something that's a really nice quality bag without paying the premium prices stay tuned but first I'm going to show you guys the supplements that I have been using because these have been really helpful in just supplementing my bar prep process um, so I'm going to show you guys that right now so the first thing I wanted to show you guys are the Critical Pass MBE flashcards. So as I previously mentioned, the MBE portion of the exam is the multiple choice portion of the exam. So these are the topics that are covered on the multiple choice section, but also on the essay portion. So it's really helpful because it really allows me to have a really in-depth understanding of the law and I can apply it for the multiple choice side of the exam as well as essays. So this is just kind of like what they look like. Um, they're really, really great about breaking down the law. I have been using them daily. I use them pretty much once I'm done studying and when I go for a walk around the neighborhood, I like to walk with one of these sections. Also, if you're someone who's on the go, maybe you are working during bar prep, it's really cool for you to just be able to take um, whichever topic you're working on and then during your lunch break or whatever, you can just go through and flash through these and they just really kind of help solidify the law that you've already covered during bar prep so here it has the law um you can also take notes on the other side if that's something that you want to do but it's definitely been really helpful um just for kind of breaking down the law so the next supplement that i have is the emmanuel strategies and tactics so what i love most about the emmanuel's strategies and tactics for the mbe is that it doesn't really help me in terms of like the substantive part of the law though it does break that down as well but it really helps you to understand how to approach each type of question so it kind of gives you the tips that you might need to see like okay Usually if I see an answer choice that looks like this, most likely it's incorrect. Or most times when the answer, the answer choice starts with this, it's a correct answer. So it's just been really helpful in just really showing you the tactics to apply on the MBE. So, so far I have been going, really kind of taking my time with this and actually taking notes. I'll show you guys kind of like what my notes look like. I've really just been going through and really just trying to understand how to approach each type of question. So I really try and take detailed notes because this really just kind of solidifies the um, information for me. So this has been one of the most helpful supplements that I have. So this is just kind of like a look at like what my notes look like. And once again, it is the Emmanuel Strategies and Tactics for the MBE. You can find this on Amazon um, and it also the way you actually approach it is you go through the multiple choice questions. So yeah, there's a lot of notes. I've worked on, I've really done like a lot of work with this. But it's, you just do the multiple choice questions. So a lot of people say that you can use this instead of Adaptabar. I actually have both of them. So pretty much it just helps you by, you do the multiple choice questions and then you go in depth about why the answer is correct. Pretty much breaks down how you should approach that question in the future if you see a question like that on the exam. So all in all, this has been very, very helpful. The next supplement that I have is Adaptabar. So this is something that all of my classmates who have taken the bar exam have emphasized taking. These are actually real bar exam questions. And once again, this is about um, the MBE. So that's the multiple choice section. So typically every day I will create an exam um, depending on what topics I want to cover. So if I want to do con law and contracts one day, I'll do like 32 to 35 questions and I'll go through and take them under time conditions. I'll choose whatever subjects I want to work on, whether it's contracts and con law one day or whether I want to just do all of the MBE topics or whether there's just one subject that I feel like I need more help on. So I'll just choose that one. And I usually select like 32 to 35 questions. Um, from there, I do them under time conditions. And then once I'm done, I take like maybe a five to 10 minute break. And then I go through and immediately review all of the questions, whether I got them right 
or wrong i go through each one of them to understand why i got it right and why i got it wrong i also look at the other answer choices to just see why that answer choice was incorrect um, and that just really helps me make sure that i don't make the same mistakes again and just make sure that i actually understand why i did well on certain questions and why i didn't so this has been another really helpful thing for me and i've used this every day every day i create a problem set i try to do at least 35 questions on adaptabar a day and then barbary also has mbe questions so i do about maybe 50 to 70 mbe questions a day so that has been really just helpful because now i notice that my mbe scores have gotten a lot higher just because of the repetition and continuing to do it and another cool thing about adaptabar is there's also an app so with the app i can do the same thing and if i'm just like laying in bed and like okay maybe i should um work on some questions i can literally just pull the app up this is what it looks like it's right on my phone and i can do practice questions there so this has been super super helpful and then the last supplement that i have been using pretty much daily is actually catered to essays so it's actually this company called baressays.com and i don't know if other states have anything similar to this but what the concept is is pretty much the founder collects previous bar exam questions so essays scored from whatever the score um, metrics are and you can pretty much I'm gonna show you guys kind of like what it looks like so here's what it looks like you can pretty much see if you want to look at someone who scored a 57.5 and below someone who scored a 60 to 62.5 which that would be passing or someone who did pretty well which is a 65 and above and so pretty much you choose what subject the exam was in um, what month it was administered was it a july was it a february or whatever and it's just super super helpful so i'll try to give you guys like a quick example so say i want to look at a civ pro exam that was administered in 2015 um and i put both february and july because i really don't know when they tested that last okay perfect so here we see someone scored a 62.5 on the civ pro exam in 2015 so i'll look at the essay and pretty much this is their actual essay that they did on the exam so it's really easy to see okay this is a pretty decent score for an essay so this is something that you're going to try and mirror or something that you should just keep in mind that this is something that they actually pretty they scored pretty well so what's cool about this is you can kind of see like okay well someone who did this work um, got a 62 um, and it's just kind of like more realistic because you see that this is someone who did their essay under the same time conditions that you'll be under um, so for me I've just found this to be extremely helpful um, and then pretty much so we have if we want to see if someone did better got a 65 this person got a 77.5 so you can see okay this is what it takes to get a 77.5 on the bar exam i feel like this is something i can do so that's actually one of the supplements that i really love because it really just helps you break down the essays the essays are um, a big component of the bar exam we do five um, different essays and then one performance test so this actually has both essays and performance tests on there so I really really do love this supplement as well and that is pretty much um, the only supplement that I have that's geared towards actual essay portion of the exam so that is pretty much it that like all of the supplements that I've been using as you guys know Barbary has us studying like four hours a day so for like I usually study maybe like 10 to 12 hours a day so when I'm not doing Barbie stuff I'm focusing on doing practice problems on my own whether it's on Adaptabar whether it's in the Emmanuel's book whether I'm using the flashcards um, whether I'm working on practice essays like I just like to do my own things just to make sure that I'm fully understanding because just going through the lectures and doing uh, a few Barbary questions like for me that hasn't really solidified the law for me so by me doing you know other work like practice questions and stuff like that it's been pretty helpful so i wanted to show you guys that i hope that that's helpful for you guys i'll try to link some things below um and yeah another thing i wanted to show you guys really quick. next i wanted to show you guys this really cute bag from teddy blake it actually came in this really nice box which is very like similar to like a louis vuitton box i'm going to show you guys the box in a second um but the dust bag was inside of the box um similar to like many other luxury bags and it is just very 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 cute so here is what the bag looks like i think this color is just super super cute for summer i honestly love it 
this is so classy who is she a classy bomb lady this is like a super cute lawyer bag like honestly this bag is really a vibe so you can actually hold it as a crossbody which i really love um my um louis vuitton bag that i showed you guys the speedy bandoulier um in 30 is also a crossbody and i just found that i really love crossbody bags so this is a bag that will definitely be in heavy rotation once i start leaving my house whenever that happens but i'm gonna put the strap on so here's what it looks like you guys i'm not gonna lie to you guys the quality of this bag is really comparable to a louis vuitton bag it feels so high quality in the color i just can't get over it so in terms of the details of the bag uh, i'm gonna take this stuff out so you guys can kind of see it the inside is like a velvet material very very cute um and there are double pockets with gold hardware you guys can kind of see so there are two pockets one on the front of the bag which zips like this and then another one on the back which has the same zipper so you can unzip it and you can just kind of put like little things inside of it like a little secret pocket there's one on both sides which is super super cool and then the inside it's actually a lot of depth it's you can really fit some good stuff in here it's really you can fit a lot in here so this is it very very cute i love it i really really love this the color is just something that i just can't get over the color is super super cute and i really do love the fact that you can really just the strap you can just carry it without the um crossbody strap and your hand can fit through perfectly you don't have to worry about it being like super cinched at the top so you it's really like not feasible you can actually genuinely carry this as a handheld or as a crossbody um and so if you guys want to kind of see the detail with the name on the front it says teddy blake new york so the bag brand is teddy blake new york however the bags are made in italy with luxury leather so this bag that i have it's called the um, roberta and it's in the color blue electric i really do love this bag i'll definitely say check this company out i'll leave their website down below see if there's anything that you guys like maybe we can be twins you guys can get this bag as well so i would definitely say check this one out um or check out all of their other bags they have so many different things to choose from i will leave their website links below compared to other luxury bag companies these prices are a lot less steep you're not going to have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for a nice leather bag um, you can check out their website see the sales that they currently have and just um, see if they have anything that you might be interested in subject matter jurisdiction refers to the court's ability to hear a type of case the federal court is a court of limited jurisdiction and can hear claims based on federal question jurisdiction and diversity jurisdiction if the court does not have an independent basis of jurisdiction, they may be able to hear a case or they may be able to hear claims under supplemental jurisdiction. So then I think the first thing that you would talk about is federal question jurisdiction because I feel like that should always come before diversity. So federal question jurisdiction, how can I say that rule easily? Okay, so Federal question jurisdiction refers to any case that arises under the U.S. Constitution, treaties, or federal statutes. Uh, for a case to have federal question jurisdiction, the plaintiff's complaint must... Federal question must be embedded in the plaintiff's complaint. It cannot be a hypothetical or a defense. It must be embedded in the plaintiff's complaint in order to satisfy federal question jurisdiction so let's see how they said it federal question jurisdiction refers to the plaintiff's well pleaded complaint okay cool so make sure to always include something about the complaint complaint and sets forth a cause of action that arises under federal law so you don't even have to go into the constitution blah 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 you can just pretty much say it arises under federal law under federal law okay so the way they say it is a case arises under federal law if the plaintiff alleges a right or interest that is substantially founded on federal law i.e. federal common law federal constitutional law federal statutes 
In the instant case, Pan and Patrick are certain claims for injuries suffered in an automobile accident. Such a case arises under state tort law, not federal law. Okay, cool. So a case is not federal law if it does not arise under the federal constitution, a federal statute, um, or is substantially dependent on the interpretation of federal law. Cool. Diversity jurisdiction. In order to satisfy diversity jurisdiction, there must be complete diversity on both sides of the case. Additionally, the amount in controversy must exceed $75,000. So, the big issue here is the fact that there are two plaintiffs. One plaintiff has two claims, both less than $75,000. However, she might be able to aggregate those two claims however the other plaintiff has a cause of action or is bringing the claim for less than five thousand dollars so the issue is how will we be able to have the court hear this case if this is a diversity case so we can aggregate plaintiff one's claims and there will be complete diversity between plaintiff one and the defendant and then we could use supplemental jurisdiction because Plaintiff two's case comes from a common nucleus of facts that are sufficient to allow him to be a second plaintiff in this case. So there's complete diversity. We have an independent basis of jurisdiction because the two cases, the two claims aggregated together is sufficient for the amount in controversy. And then although we don't have an independent basis of jurisdiction for plaintiff number two with supplemental jurisdiction, the court has the discretion to hear his case as well. Not mandatory, but they do have the discretion to do that. Okay, so then moving on to personal jurisdiction.